Tonight we have Valerie Anderson, who is the Director of Communications of the Florida Native Plant Society. She actually grew up in Ormond Beach on Poplar Drive, and she likes to make maps. Very interesting. Um, she has a degree in Geographic Information Science and Technology from the University of Southern California, and a degree in Horticulture from the University of Florida. She's really into a plant called the Florida Feather Shank, Shonocolon dubium, and we'll be making an effort to get it listed this year. And she would like you to email her sightings of this, what she calls dubious little bunch flower. Um, and she's gonna talk about that, I believe, at, uh, in, in part of her presentation. And tonight she's gonna talk um, mostly about the mission work of Florida Native Plant Society and how it fits into Florida's conservation needs. Let's welcome Valerie Anderson. Thank you so much for having me. I, I wish this was in person. This is so much more fun to give in person, but this will have to do for now. So let's start with Shonacolon dubium. I call it the dubious little plant because its common name is Florida feather shank. It's endemic to the state of Florida. And as you can see, it's in Volusia County. And it might be called feather shank because its shank, its flowering stalk is pretty light and bendy. So on the left is a really bendy specimen. Normally they're upright, but if they get stomped on or pushed over, they really do flop. And they're long, like they can be really long. I mean, on average, they're maybe like three foot tall, um, but I saw one that was like four and a half feet. It's a, it's in the monocots and it's in the bunch flower family, Melanthiaceae, and it's in with the, the feather shanks. There's another one in Texas as well. Um, so I was busy today. So my friend made me this map of all of the sand hill in Volusia County. You can see there's some in Gamble Place, um, Lake Beresford, Hart Island, Lake Door State Forest, and he missed the Tiger Bay State Forest, which is where Paul Rubman had seen it with uh, Peter May back in 2017. So you guys do have it. And if you get out to any sand hills, it is blooming right now. And it blooms from the bottom up and then it gets these little seed pods. And these seeds are can be used as pesticides. Okay, so I work for the Florida Native Plant Society now, have since 2018. And before that, I worked for land trusts. In fact, I still work for land trusts um, on the side. And so I'm really into keeping Florida, Florida. And what the Florida Native Plant Society does is tries really, really hard to keep Florida, Florida. So does anyone want to jump in and say, what is the mission of the Florida Native Plant Society? Okay, no takers. Preserve, conserve, and restore the native plants and native plant communities of Florida. So here we're doing some restoration in Central Florida. Uh, I know you guys have some rescue and restoration projects yourself, which is very nice. We really wanna prevent localized population extinctions because especially for plants like Schwannocolon dubium, that increases the risk of species extinctions for narrow range endemics like Schwannocolon dubium, Asclepias fei, and many other Florida endemic plants. We have insanely high levels of endemism in Florida you know, plants that are here and nowhere else. And so every localized species extinction narrows the gene pool for that species. It makes it harder for it to survive into the future. Plus, I don't know who in here has done restoration, but it's really hard and takes a really long time. O'Kara says she thinks we're top five in the US. Yeah, I did kind of a not awesome editing job on Reed Noss's um, talk for the 2019 conference but I'm gonna re-edit that with his slides and make it look really good because he did an amazing job. Um, basically, he's pitching for us to become a new global biodiversity hotspot in Florida, the Southeast Coastal Plain. And specifically, uh, specifically the Panhandle of Florida, but you know, uh, oh, maybe we already considered one. Sorry, I don't stay up on all that. Number 36 in the world. Thank you, Kara. In addition to these localized population extinctions, once you lose the natural lands and that natural land cover, 
and those natural communities, you also lose the seed bank, uh, which is millions of years in the making. Um, and of course, you lose all the natural communities and all of the animals, insects and animals that depend on those native plant communities, uh, those native plants in that specific kind of community mosaic. How does the Florida Native Plant Society do this? Okay, so I would say our main policy initiative for, I mean, long before I came on board was defend Florida forever. That is not going well. The Waria area is a project up in Marion County where we decided we're just gonna buy the land because nobody else is protecting that property. And thanks to my client, Conservation Florida, Florida's only statewide land trust, who actually was going to surplus some property in that area and they donated a parcel to us. Now we have this property with all this great seed bank for this endangered mustard. Yes, we have an endangered mustard in Florida, uh, several actually, and um, called Weria. And so we have this property, Florida Native Plant Society owns it, and it was pretty cheap. Um, we also get involved in managing and restoring protected lands, either by our um, land management partners program, which I don't know, you can ra well, not raise your hand, but you can comment in the chat if you've gone on a land management review. I don't keep up with who goes on those, but um, by going to those land management reviews and stumping for um, more prescribed burning, stumping for good ground cover management, stumping for managing for rare and endangered species. Florida Native Plant Society and its chapters are, oh, thank you, Tiger Bay and Hawk Creek. Hawk Creek. Um, I don't know where Hawk Creek is. Cool. So by doing that, we are improving management on lands that we don't, we don't own as an organization, but of course we the people, we own them. Right, yeah. Yeah, most reviewers are, I mean, I've been on two land management reviews now and mostly the people that are there are hunters talking about like bag limits and all sorts of other harvest stuff and not necessarily, I mean, not, not that hunting and conservation are incompatible because they're quite compatible in many places, in many situations, but um, you know, it, it's very important to get these native plant concerns represented in the management plans, which is what land management reviews are for. Our main focus right now is populations in natural areas that are being overlooked by Florida Forever and not, not really surveyed or handled by land managers. A good example of this is our Dysorandra monitoring project. We, have to, we went after a grant um, by Duke for this Dysorandra monitoring project. Dysorandra are our um, scrub mint, the Florida scrub mint. And um, yes, we are working on the gaps. So, you know, we don't need to be duplicating effort. I mean, there's enough duplication of effort going on in the nonprofit world already. Um, you know, we know about native plants. That's one thing we have, you know, 34 chapters statewide with, you know, 100 members, 50 members each who know so much about native plants. And that knowledge is extremely useful. And of course, together we have funding. We have three staff members now. We're not gonna let these things go extinct. And preferably we're not gonna let any more local extinctions happen. So our Dicerandra project, we have two species, Dicerandra cornatissima, spurred, long spurred mint, and then Dicerandra modesta, which is like a near tragedy. So cornatissima is doing okay. It's up in the, the car cross Florida Greenway. You know, this bridge over 95, um, just south of Ocala, north of Ocala. Anyways, up there, near Ocala. And um, so it's in that protected area and it's been moderately well managed for. Dicerandra Modesta is in a terrible place. It's in this like little conservation island in Polk County in a property managed by the St. John's River Water Management District. And some botanist, I don't know who, uh, had like started looking at it and then they like plowed the sable trail through it. And this is the only protected population and potentially the only population of this plant in the world. And so um, it's Duke's right away. So we're basically like, um, and so we're monitoring this mint and making recommendations for the managers to manage the property better. Because basically, they go in there and they roller chop, lay all the vegetation down, and then light it up, which is fine for some species, but basically 
extirpates the uh, diceryandra and seed bank in, in the locations where it gets really hot and they burn. Flora Forever. So every single save Florida forever, refund Florida forever thing, um, we're, we're a part of it. We have a lobbyist, you might be surprised to know. Her name is Sue Mullins. And we, every, actually until this year, when we got a contract expansion for her, that was the only thing she did, is try and get more Florida forever money. Here's maybe the most depressing chart you might see in uh, conservation funding. Here we go, the year 2000, 300 million, dun, 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 dun. every year we're protecting more land, even though Florida's developing rapidly, still we're okay. 2008, boom, zero. What happened in 2008? 2008, we had a big recession. Well, a, there was a recession and a change of, uh, of uh, administrations probably also. So whenever I give this presentation, um, Everybody goes, it's Governor Scott, it's Governor Scott. Uh, but he didn't become governor until 2011, right here. Which is not to say he did amazing things for conservation, but um, he was not the cause of defunding Florida forever. Okay, so we get a little bit of money back in 2010, and then the whole Florida Conservation Voters Amendment 1 was, was a recognition that we used to have $30 million, $300 million coming in every year, and now we have, you know, a pittance. And still, still, the legislature refused to refund Florida forever and are using that money for HR contracts and trucks and basically anything but buying land, basically anything. So in 2018, we got $100 million. In 2019, we got 33 million. Amendment one, the Land and Water Conservation Amendment was to put one third of dock stamps revenues. So dock stamps are what you pay for when you buy property in the state of Florida. You know, dock stamps taxes, like a tax to, for them to put a stamp on the document. And in fiscal year 2019, the estimate by the Florida, whatever, you know, economic office, $900 million was that. So we're supposed to be getting $900 million of conservation funding, land conservation funding last year. And we got 33 million. That's not 10%. And this, I mean, that, that, Senators, state senators who are ostensibly, you know, environmentally friendly propose year after year bills that are like a hundred million. You just want to show some people some percentages and say that's, you know, where where's 800, where's over $800 million going? So this is where we are in the state of Florida. The government is not doing it for us and they should be. They should be doing it for us. But we, as a Florida Native Plant Society, we can still fill the gaps. Even if it was getting funded, this is the Florida strategy, Florida Ecological Greenways. And nonprofits like the uh, Florida um, Wildlife Corridor plug right into this. It's very important to be connected. This, this big, wild, and connected is something that, that even if, we had lots and lots of funding for Florida Forever. Plant conservation and small, highly valuable, in term, for us, highly valuable plant areas would not be the focus of Florida Forever. And just like here on the left, as Kara says, Madalea people flora, what about rare plants and small tracks? We can do that. I mean, to an extent, but we're still gonna try. Here is the um, Nature Serve Biodiversity Hotspots for um, Rarity Weighted Richness Index. So that's literally, you know, number of rare species per area. And you see Blake Wells Ridge down at the bottom. And then see, ooh, right up into Volusia County, that little, the little I-4 corridor thing going on. Um, and then the Panhandle, of course, because you've got that crossover between the tropical trees and tropical species, and then the Appalachian species. 
really a high endemism. Okay, so the Wary Area Project is my favorite uh, because I named it. They were going to call it the Waria Partners in Conservation Project or something. All right, so it's an endangered mustard. It's sort of like a early successional kind of plant, loves burning, um, really super sand hill, super scrub. And so here's the area. It's, it's sort of between the Okawaha Prairie Restoration Area and the Sunny Hill Restoration Area, right along the Okawaha River. There's sand skinks, there's black bears. I've never personally seen a sand skink, but I've been out there and I've seen their little, their little squirrely, squirrely things. They're adorable. Oh yes, it's an annual, so it dies back and it relies on these, these super cute dehiscent seed pods. You fling seeds everywhere. And here's a glamour shot. So gorgeous. Um, so our first thing to do was we started working with the Putnam Land Conservancy because Florida Native Plant Study is not a land trust. We are a scientific-based membership organization that cultivates the love of native plants. We had never owned anything before. Um, and so definitely low-hanging fruit. So we sent letters to people and asked them, would they give us their property? Well, not even us. Would you give Putnam Land Conservancy? their property. And some people said yes. So there's like lots of dots here and uh, you can see the little the red squares are where people just gave us property. And this this red boundary with the uh, yellow cross hatching, I did not make this map. This is it's a lot of colors going on here. Um, we own that. That's ours. Yeah. We fundraised and we got a grant. So we didn't take any money out of membership. Or, or um, any other, you know, if, if you donated to the general fund, we didn't take money out of that for this purchase. This was all like separate, um, separate money. So you can see we have our, our warrior corridor because it could connect these two conservation lands if we got it all in protection. And there's my map uh, with the black bear ranges overlapping. Um, So it's federally endangered, and it's never been in a Florida Forever project. There's no, no interest. So when I investigated this property for, um, for Conservation Florida, you know, they send me a parcel number, and I look up for conservation value. I told them to get rid of it because <laughs> uh, I didn't know about Waria, and so I got this. I got the job with Florida Native Plant Society and I called my, my old um, supervisor because I needed some real estate questions. And I asked him if there was any properties, you know, for sale or like low cost, or could he help me look for this? And he's like, uh, Valerie, um, you know, you told us to sell that. <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> and he's like, hey, maybe we could just give it to you. So um, yeah, that's, PLC has that lot now. Uh, really great. I already talked about the Dicerandra Conservation Project. So Terrier Keepers is super exciting. We just hired a part-time employee. That's also not membership money. That is separate grant funding for her. That's Lily Anderson Messick. Oh, Katie says Florida Forever got 100 million in the 2020 legislative session. Session ended last month. Thank you. Make that a V, back up to 100. We'd really want to be at 300, but 100 is better than nothing. And so I'm not in the panhandle, so I don't really know much about Terraria, except that it's an endangered tree. We're also doing population monitoring of, of other species, other rare species, sort of as they come on our radar. Um, some habitat monitoring and seed collection, population introductions, and plant rescue, um, mostly in central Florida. So here's Dicerandra modesta. Uh, the plant that I was talking to you about within the Sable Trail right of way and in that conservation area in Polk County. And this is what it looks like to go survey. Oh, yes, Kara says we are surveying for Asclepias fei too. So that's Florida milkweed, endemic milkweed that we tried to get listed a couple years ago. 
and we hadn't really done all of our due diligence. And so the people who approve, who, you know, approve or deny listing were like, get us more information before we'll list the species. Okay. So here's what it looks like. Uh, it sort of survives really well in these, these habitat openings where you know, we can see some persimmon, um, it's a lot of gallberry, myrtle oak. This would be like a roller chopped opening, but that doesn't have a lot of um, like debris piled on the surface. And here's Juliet, that's our executive director. Um, and here's Dicerandra cornetissima, which I can't tell them apart, except, you know, they live in different places. Um, and before coronavirus, we used to get groups of volunteers together to help us monitor, um, but we don't do that anymore. Terraria Keepers, um, so that's Lee Brooks there on the right. And I don't have a photo of Lily in here, um, but you can see the Florida U uh, or stinking, stinking Cedar um, or Florida Terraria is a tree and we have to cage it because deer rub on it. And if it, you know, gets damaged, it gets really sick, there's a fungus on it. Um, and Hurricane Michael has really made monitoring for this species really difficult. As you can see, there's a guy sitting on that log and much of this debris has not been removed uh, because there's these really deep ravines. So here's some of our, um, our seed collection, mostly on development sites but occasionally on other properties. And we're specifically focusing on um, federally endangered and state endangered plants in development sites so we can conserve that genetic diversity because these are sites that we've tried to save and can't, like the Castle Hill site in Claremont, which was on the Florida Forever list. And then because Florida Forever was not adequately funded, um, the owner decided to develop it. So we have nursery partners um, who help us propagate these plants. Um, they will take cuttings, they will you know, grow out our seed for us, they'll do rescues. So we get a bunch of people to volunteer and then pull the plants out of the ground, put them in pots, send them to Green Isle, or they hold them until we can arrange a work day for uh, restoration. This is a photo of Britain's bear grass, um, Melina bretonii. And this is the end of my presentation.